screen, and, and Robert, there's nothing wrong with you capturing the, the display. A square on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Calmate can do squares on the screen, multiples of colors. Um, but what, what they haven't coded up yet is uh, an example of this. This is a, uh, a multi-box pattern. So this would be four, 10 boxes. So the background is one. And you've got one here, which is, uh, I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, yeah, you can sort of see it. It's four 10-bit code two, values below P. And that's for se setting your... Uh, well, in theory, it's for setting contrast, but yes. as I'll talk about in a minute, the whole uh, notion of contrast and brightness doesn't really have any validity in the digital world. But I'll come back to that. So we've got background, then we have this one, which is four below peak, another one in the center, which is back to peak. It's kind of like a contrast pattern. Uh -huh. And then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, actually, I think it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, but anyway, the point is you can draw 10 boxes. Now, if you can draw 10 boxes, that means you could do an ANSI checkerboard, you could do a corner box pattern, you could do the tunnel test, which is like increasing the smaller um, but decreasing luminance uh, squares, and then you tend to measure in the center. Um, the resolution, the raster size is UHD, um, so you define the start point and then the width and depth of the pattern. And it's 10-bit RGB full range for the, uh, for, for the um, triplet that you provide uh, to the pattern itself. Um, so that's the first part, up to 10 boxes. And I, I have just two examples. One is the high, and this one is the example of the low. And you can see this would be something equivalent to a brightness pattern. Right. As I say, these are just examples of how to do 10 boxes. The other uh, functionality is gradients. Right. You can do either horizontal or vertical gradients, up to four. Um, the way you define these is you define a start RGB triplet, an increment RGB triplet size. So right. you want to increment one code value per step, and then the step size in pixels. So this being 3840 along, to get from zero to 1023, if I did one step per pixel, I'd reach peak by the time I was here. Yeah. So I've had to do it one per two pixels so that I don't reach it until near the end. Um, but you can see that this is 10 bit, obviously it is, it's very smooth. Right. But this is after calibration as well, so the calibration hasn't introduced banding at all here. Um, a better example though of, what, of the power of the gradient is this is a very low gradient. I'm not even sure if it'll come out on camera, but it starts at zero and it goes up to 10-bit code value 16 or 8-bit 4. So it's less than 1%. Um, I'll wait for those on-screen displays to go off. Um, but the point of this is that you can look at your step out of black or your very low shadow detail and see, do I have any color cast in here? Or, that kind Beautiful. of thing, and in this case, one 10 bit step is about this wide because we very, only have 16 nice. before we get to the other side. And these patterns are built in, yes, with every TV, every 2019 Alpha 9 Gen 2 and Alpha 7 Gen 2. Yeah, um, so I'm going to disable the patterns and uh, I'm going to talk about the one limitation that the pattern generator does have. Um, and I think LG may have incorrectly. Uh, incorrectly messaged that it was only for SDR since you were not the first person that's, who said that. That's what I was told. Right. So, um, actually this part, you can't video, but... Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> don't video the screen. Yeah, don't video the screen, but I'll, but I'll talk about the location in the video pipeline. Uh -huh. So, in a video pipeline you have a, an HDR processing section. Every TV panel that every manufacturer makes is a 2.2 gamma panel. So the image processing has to convert from PQ to gamma and then employ a roll-off or a tone curve. Um, and then once you're in gamma space, then you can do your calibration. So the calibration is done in these sections here, the 1D LUT and the 33 cube 3D LUT. Um, and the test pattern generator is at this point, just, just in front of the 3D LUT. So that means you can calibrate in front for of the 1D light too, though. Right? Well, this is a, a D gamma and re gamma fixed function, ah. uh, and the reason they are there is if you use a three by three matrix, which is available, Calman doesn't typically use it, but it is available to Calman to use for calibration. Right. We do our gamut mapping in a 3D light, so we we don't use this. But if you use a three by three matrix, you should be in linear space. So this is a go linear, go back to gamma. Got That's it. Those are. So those are disabled in, in use. But it's, it's ahead of that, it's RGB full range by this point, um, 
But these are the same uh, 33 cubes, 3D light and 1D light, which are used for SDR, HDR, and Dolby Vision. So you absolutely can calibrate all three of those. Yeah. What you cannot do is validate HDR or Dolby Vision, because validation typically means going through the entire video pipeline, and therefore, you know, with a PQ input, seeing how are you tracking PQ now after calibration. Because, because all, all it's screen. looking at is gamma. It's right, it's in the gamma domain. In the gamma domain, yeah. What we have done is there are small rounding errors by going through a video pipeline like this. So since we know that all source devices coming in over HDMI, I don't want to calibrate perfectly for this point. I want to calibrate perfectly for what's coming in over HDMI. Sure. So when Calman requests a 5% patch, we work out what's the 10-bit value of 5% coming in here in limited range. What would that result in by the time it's gone through any rounding errors or, or uh, bit precision manipulation? And that's the, the value of the patch that gets applied. So it's not just a simple conversion from 5% to 10-bit full range. We, we consider all of this upstream pipeline. So, that, so what you should be able to do if you're a reviewer or a calibrator is test my internal patch generator and then compare your result with an external one. They should be exactly spot the same. on. Yep. Um, so this is a good lead-in to the next feature that we're adding. But what I want you to understand.